Fair warning, this video contains a bit of cartoony violence and some slightly suggestive themes. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> Hello everyone! It's Ram Machine Dex here again with another game of the week. Neighbors, eh? Either they're the right people that can be handy in a pinch, or be absolutely um problematic. Perhaps even annoying that you wanna bury them six feet down in steaming pile of sh Jokes aside, maybe you fall in the lair. Maybe if you had a neighbor so freaking terrible. You'd almost do anything to get rid of them. Well, if your name's Woody, then I have the game just for you. Let's set up some lights, roll the camera, and hit action. Neighbors from Hell, also known in the US as Neighbors from Hell, see a difference? Mm -hmm. Is a game developed by Jewwood Vienna and published by Jewwood Entertainment with a September 22, 2003 North American release. It was initially for PC, but with layer ports to the GameCube, original Xbox, Nintendo DS, and later Android and iOS. Its sequel, Neighbors from Hell 2, was released on May 7, 2006 for North America, and is PC exclusive. But first, a little backstory. Jewood was an Austrian game publisher founded in 1995 based in Lietzen, Austria. Their claim to fame includes publishing games such as the Gothic and the Guild series. Otherwise, their titles were hit or miss. And I mean a lot of misses. After releasing a wave of Hoham software, they went bankrupt around 2011 and their IPs were mostly acquired by THQ Nordic. Hence why on October 8, 2020, a remaster called Neighbors Back From Hell was released for PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch, but we'll get to the details on that later in this video. For this video, I'll be using the PC version for both games and the remaster later on, as playing with a keyboard and mouse seems a bit more proper than using a controller for this game. But first, let's talk some story. You play as Woody, a seemingly easygoing guy in the neighborhood that gets disturbed by his next door neighbor, the Rottweilers. As you can clearly tell, these neighbors are the very definition of terrible. And at this point, can you really blame Woody here? Poor guy just wants to chill in his yard, give him a break. After this, Woody decides he has had enough and decides to call a TV crew in order to film, well, Neighbors from Hell, the game's namesake. I mean, sure, we're trespassing over here, but we're here for some entertainment, so screw it. But enough of that intro, you know we want to see some action. Neighbors from Hell is basically a puzzle strategy game. The premise is simple. Play a bunch of pranks on your neighbor, and generally cause mayhem, and basically make your neighbor's life, well, a living hell? Of course, the goal of the game is to get those sweet ratings since you're running a TV show after all, and that's the important part. The game is point and click, meaning all you have to do is point where you want Woody to go and click to make him do so. The same logic applies for interacting with stuff in the level. First off, you start by finding items in the level and placing them in your inventory. Some items include markers, marbles, soap, toilet paper, 
an egg way past its prime, and many more if you take the time to find them all in the level. Some items require you to win a minigame, and some require a prank to be done before you can get it. Once you have your items, here's where the fun part begins. To set a prank, it's usually selecting an item from your inventory, and then clicking again in the level on where you want to set it. <laughs> Though sometimes this isn't required. If you've done things right, then all you need is the neighbor to spring the trap and bam! Chaos ensues. You can even chain multiple pranks together to get an even bigger reaction from the neighbor. Timing will be key here to get the maximum ratings possible. You'll notice that the neighbor follows a set pattern, which you'll need to observe to time all your pranks correctly. Of course, setting pranks isn't quite that simple. The general rule is that if your neighbor catches you in the same room, you're going to get your face beat up, or who knows what else, and thus end up failing the level. And if this wasn't bad enough, there's also the matter of the neighbor's pets, a parrot and a dog. Should they catch you making enough noise, they can raise an alarm and the neighbor will come running towards where they are and if you don't move out of there, you toast. Thankfully, you can have Woody sneak by pointing and clicking, but with the right mouse button so that you don't make noise. Now generally, I find the game is quite chill on its scoring system. I mean sure, you get higher points by getting all the possible pranks, not losing all your lives, well at least for the sequel or the HD remaster at least. And the amount of time it takes for you to finish the level, but it isn't really required to win. The first game takes place in the neighbor's house where more areas get unlocked the more you play the game, ranging from the living room, all the way to the basement, and even up to the attic. It isn't a very long game to beat, I'd put it in the ballpark of a few minutes to 100% the game if you memorize all the patterns and generally get good. But that's about it for the first game. We have to talk about the sequel. Neighbors from Hell 2 on vacation. The story for this one is that the neighbor has basically had enough of Woody's antics and has decided to take a very long vacation with multiple destinations. Unfortunately for the neighbor and fortunately for us, Woody is on board. As with the first game, the premise remains the same. Prank your neighbors for the ratings. Of course, the locations are a bit more international this time, ranging from the ship itself, to China, to Mexico, to India, you get the gist. As you can see, the graphics have been updated significantly and generally looks more appealing to the eye than the first game. The biggest change in the sequel is the addition of the tree life system, rather than the one life system the first game had. This is a pretty welcome change, as now when you get caught, you just lose one of these lives and not restart the entire level at the cost of some score. Another big change is that there's more characters than just you and the neighbor. One of these new characters is Olga. Clearly, the neighbor is making eyes on her, and fortunately, Olga is no threat to Woody here. Fortunately, you can pull pranks that basically put the neighbor in hot water with Olga, and boy, you do not want to mess with Olga, as you can see right here. In the later parts of the game, you can actually see that Olga has a kid, and again, same principle applies. Another character is the neighbor's mom has decided to join the cruise. Now, with the sequel, it actually makes it a little harder, because now you have both the neighbor and the mom to deal with. 
you don't need to pull pranks on the mom this time. But you do have to watch out for her as she can basically beat you up just like the neighbor if you get caught. But just like with Olga, you can actually put the neighbor in her bad books if you play your pranks right. Overall, I think the sequel basically improves everything about the first game and makes it actually more enjoyable to play while offering more interesting locations and a lot more interesting characters along the way. The game appears to be well liked and is quite the classic to a lot of people, myself included. So much so that I've heard and seen actually unofficial sequels that follow the second game so you got games like Neighbors from Hell 3, 4, and so on actually exist out there. Though I haven't played those yet since they seem to be in Russian most of the time, and Jewett has no direct involvement in any of these. With that in mind, it was a surprise that on October 8th of 2020 that we got a remaster of the first two games titled Neighbors Back From Hell, developed now by Handy Games and published by Jewett's direct successor publisher, THQ Nordic. There's a number of quality of life changes in this remaster. Full 1080p widescreen and updated visuals. Double frame rate for all the animations across the board. And the entire game now runs on the Unity engine allowing straightforward ports other than the PC. The camera has now been expanded so that you get a better bird's eye view of the entire level. It also adds the tree live system back to the first game. New puzzles were added to spice things up, however I think the tutorial sections have been rushed a bit and is the weakest part of the whole remaster. Overall though, it's still a solid fresh coat of paint for the first two games if you ask me. Now, I will admit, the game can get pretty repetitive and linear as you play the same level to get the max rating, but I think the charm and the humor of the game is something to be respected and liked even after all these years. The HD remaster certainly puts a fresh coat of paint to update both games for the modern era, and hopefully we see some new games out of the series that's been admittedly out to pasture for a few years now. And that's a cut for this game of the week. Be creative, don't get caught, and most of all, get those ratings. I'll see you next time. Game on! Hey folks, this is Ramon, and I'm doing a bit of um, editor notes for this uh, game of the week and what's going on. I would like to announce that Game of the Week is now Game of the Month. Now a good reason for this is because this video alone has taken about two weeks to make rather than the expected every week. And in the name of quality, I think it would be best if it's going to be every month so that I can actually cover every game uh, into a mini review rather than just talking about what it is. and. I'm hoping that this new format will still be entertaining for you guys, but that's all the time we have now. Please like, comment, and subscribe to redzone.ca, and I will catch you next time. Game on!